Get him up here, get him. <laughs> there you go. Good job. It's about to get really heavy. Look at this guy. Look at the belly on this one. Holy cow, you think this guy's been eating? Look at down this fish's mouth. What do you think he's eating? Mr. Crayfish didn't make it home tonight. Whoa! <laughs> that one just hit the water. And that fish was on. Time on the Water is brought to you in part by Shimano Rods and Reels. Water Outdoors is your fishing and hunting boating center. We have boats from Bass Cat, Sea Ark, Skeeter. If you hunt or fish, we've got a boat that'll work for you. Time on the Water Outdoors has a full service tackle department with lines like Shimano, Terminator, Rapala, as long as a complete line of Hyla baits. If you're going to go fishing on the Illinois River, we have a full service live bait system here. Come to Time on the Water Outdoors for outdoorsmen by outdoorsmen. Time on the Water Outdoors presents Muskie Academy, featuring host of Muskie Hunter TV, Jim Sarek, and Midwest guide, Mike Hulbert. Register at timeonthewateroutdoors.com or call 815-663-1000. Today's show, we've actually got a little bit of mixture. We're gonna be looking at three different places we filmed this past year. The first one was the Emiquan Preserve uh, down south of, of Peoria. Uh, then second, Newton Lake, a power plant lake where we've been to a bunch of times. And then lastly, Lake Delavan, which is like cheating. Uh, three really good places to fish, three completely opposite, couldn't be more different. Uh, but all great places to fish and we had a lot of fun. I the buzz bait and I picked up a walking bait. And this guy isn't a lot different size than the last one, but he's a nice fish. As I said before, this is 3,000 acres of reflooded backwaters of the Illinois River that is being kept pristine. I mean, there's no pollutants at all. There's, there's very limited access, no shore access. And like I said, you can only have a small boat like this with an electric motor. But uh, if it produces fish like that, I'm all for it. Nice fish, about a 15, 16 incher here. I switched up, I was throwing the top water and I was getting blow ups, but they just weren't committing to it. So I put on a little uh, white swim jig. And look at this dude. Boy, and he ate it too. I'm getting a little bigger here. And that fish is two and a half pounds. Beautiful, look at how healthy and beautiful these fish are. There's just tons and tons and tons of grass here. This place is relatively flat. Like I said, it's, it's a reclaimed uh, backwater of the Illinois River. And what they did was they cut dredges in it. So there's little deeper channels uh, that are, you know, kind of hot spots for the fish. But, you know, we put on, I'm, I'm lucky I've got this little Bass Cat Felix, which is an awesome boat for here. But we just rigged it. I don't even have a depth finder on it. We're kind of out here blind. Uh, just looking at grass, looking at where you, we can see obvious little dredges in places. And uh, it's still pretty good because we've only been here half hour and that's our third fish. So I'm not too worried about it, but uh, boy, so far what a fishery. We moved offshore a little bit. Another nice fish. And I found some isolated grass out here kind of near the middle and you have to watch if you come out here to Emiquan because there is part of it, not a bad fish, there is part of it that's not open for fishing. There's about half of it that stays a wildlife sanctuary. Uh, but there's buoys, 
so I, I came out here to this little isolated grass and I threw the swim jig through it. And that's where this guy was. There seems to be lots of bait in the area. Just looks like the kind of place you should have a, a few fish and there was number one. We haven't been here very long and in fact we're still just a couple hundred yards from the launch ramp. Uh, evidently there's, uh, everything I've heard is true, there's a ton of fish here at Emaquan. <laughs> I set the hook and he came running out at me and I couldn't catch up with him to set the hook. I switched to a little, let me get rid of this guy first. Just another nice little 15, 16 inch fish. I switched to actually uh, a brand that I'm making now. It's fluke type bait, a Hyla Shad. <laughs> and it's a little smaller, so I'm throwing it on spinning tackle, which ordinarily um, I wouldn't do with a bait like this, especially in heavy cover, but Power Pro, you know, kind of counteracts that. I've got 15 pound, actually 16 pound on here and I'm not at all worried that they're going to get me down in that stuff. I won't be able to set the hook, won't be able to get them out. So I can throw this light little bait with spinning tackle, but yet have a real good chance of getting them out of there. That was number one. Uh, we found a dredge up here on the lake, a little bit deeper water, weeds on both sides, saw some bait fish activity, so I'm hoping we can uh, get into a bunch of them now. Uh, the Emaquan Preserve is south of Peoria by about an hour. Uh, it is a reclaimed section of the Illinois River. Uh, it's, it was made by a group called the Nature Conservancy, which actually did a lake called Hennepin Hopper not long before. Uh, it's a big, shallow lake. It's 3,000 acres, and it's trolling motor only. You cannot even have a gas motor on your boat. I mean, they keep it pristine. Uh, they really limit the kinds of baits you can use as far as live bait. This is going to be a complete reclamation back to what nature had. Uh, but for you, you guys that want to go out there and have a boat with just a trolling motor on it, it is a fishing paradise. It is absolutely loaded with largemouth bass. A lot of them in the two and three pound range, up to 10 pounds I've heard. Uh, but it's a little bit different. You know, you got to have the boat to go there, but well worth the trip. That one just hit the water, and the fish hit me. Whoa. Boy, they're not giants. I mean, they're really nice fish. You know, two pound fish, but they just sure fight. Let me get this dude in here. I mean, this is a tournament keeper just about anywhere. Oh boy, I just barely had him skin hook. Look at that. I'm going to let this guy go. I'll show you how I'm rigging these baits. Bleeding a little bit. These are actually the baits I'm using. Just the white shad color. Uh, you of course get them a time on the water outdoors. But I'm rigging them Texas style. You just kind of go in through the head. About a quarter of an inch, bring your hook out. Pull it so the knot disappears all the way in the plastic. And then there's a little slot here where you put your hook and I try to bring it through so it's just skin hooked on the top. And that's it. And I'm, it's really weedless. You can throw it just about anywhere, wood, rock, grass. Uh, but because it is weedless, you, you know, you have to set the hook when one of them bites. So maybe we're figuring something out. We're at a little intersection. There's two of these dredges here. And uh, it kind of makes a T. This now you got to remember this is all big flat land, and apparently this is what they see. That's the smallest one of the day, probably 13 inches. This is what this river looked like before man got involved. You know, when it was just floodlands and and good fishing and clean water, and that's kind of what they're trying to bring back here. And we can only imagine if that's what it was that fishing was incredible, <laughs> because. Uh, this is pretty awesome here. It's just miles and miles and miles of grass and beautiful water. You know, everywhere they put one of these dredge, they, they kind of scooped out the dirt and, and exposed the bottom. And a lot of what you had was this clear dredge, you know, or a little straight channel. 
and then weeds growing on the side of it, whether it was lily pads, whether it was arrowheads, all the kinds of different grass. And what would, I think what was going on was the fish would you know, kind of stay in this channel, but when they wanted to eat, they'd go up into the edges of this grass, and they'd be all over the place. And if you found the right little patch, you could get two or three out of one little area. Taking a little soda break. Threw a bait past uh, some weeds and got this dude. Evidently, there's a lot of fish here. We were actually trolling along. Not a giant, but okay. Just got a little Senko type bait on, threw it past some weeds, and boom, there he was. Time on the Water is brought to you by Humminbird Electronics. Simply, clearly, better. Time on the Water Outdoors is your fishing and hunting boating center. We have boats from Bass Cap, Sea Ark, Skeeter. If you hunt or fish, we've got a boat that'll work for you. Time on the Water Outdoors has a full service tackle department with lines like Shimano, Terminator, Rapala, as long as a complete line of Hyla baits. If you're gonna go fishing on the Illinois River, we have a full service live bait system here. Come to Time on the Water Outdoors for outdoorsmen by outdoorsmen. For years, they've quietly taken you where the fish are, but now the silence is about to break. With the incredible new iPilot Link, your Minn Kota and Humminbird can communicate with each other so you can hold on a spot like an electronic anchor, record and return to waypoints and paths, follow any Lake Master depth contour, and more, all automatically and all from your Humminbird or the Link remote. They talk, and you'll be speechless. New for this year, at Time on the Water Outdoors, we have Hyla baits. I've been fishing soft plastic baits for years, and I think we put together a lineup of baits that will work in any fishing condition. Whether you flip, skip, pitch, or cast, we have a bait that will do the job. Available in many colors, sizes, and shapes, Hyla baits will help you fill your live well. Go to www.timeonthewateroutdoors.com and check out Hyla baits, a better bait at a better price. Time on the Water Outdoors presents Muskie Academy, featuring host of Muskie Hunter TV, Jim Sarek, and Midwest guide, Mike Hulbert. Register at timeonthewateroutdoors.com or call 815-663-1000. Time on the Water is brought to you by Minn Kota Trolling Motors. Anywhere, anytime. The second of the three lakes we did in this show was Newton Lake. Now Newton, we've been there before. Although I'd always been there in the spring, I'd never been there in the fall. And we decided to load up the boat and I took uh, my head salesman Flick and we hopped in and we went down there. And we thought we might catch some schooling fish. It was a little bit tough. Uh, we were able to find some on top waters. You know, Newton, because it's a power plant lake, was much warmer than everything else. And right off the bat, I caught a couple on a popper, and then we caught some on spinners and other baits. And what might be thought of as a difficult you know, day on Newton was actually really good fishing. We managed to catch quite a few fish. Uh, no giants, and there are some there, but boy, we had fun. Here's a dandy. We are here on Newton Lake in uh, a little extended summer. It's gonna be 70 degrees a day. Boy, that giant just sucked it in. Nice. Here with uh, my time on the water partner, Flick, fishing. Just, just launched a boat. Just a nice little healthy bass. This actually isn't a keeper here. I think they gotta be 18 inches. That but we're looking to catch about 50 of those today. So uh, maybe we're setting the bar a little high, but there's number one. Keeps them nice and healthy. Was it? He hit it and dove. It was like a submarine. There's another one in there. About the same size. We're just kind of running banks. We're, we're really not sure what they're doing right now. Just a little dude, but boy, he hit it good. Smack that one. So Flix, uh, we're like alternating topwater baits. I just picked up a buzz bait, decided to try that. 
even we're, though we're here, it's late October. You know, the water's still 70 degrees and we're gonna have like a 70 degree day. So, top waters are just a fun way to go. Yeah, smaller one though. Dropped down from the big fluke and went to the little fluke. Well, you know there's bait here. Well, maybe that's the size there. Yeah, cool. That's, uh, How many casts have we made at that point? And, and I changed them, changed yeah. a little bit uh, smaller lure than there was. Up that two inches off the bait, I guess, or inch and a half off the bait. Little things, I guess. That's, I saw you were catching more hits on a little bitty popper. Maybe they just don't want a big meal right now. Yeah. You know, even though it was late October when we were there, it was a 70 degree day. It was actually kind of freaky, and, and you know, first of all, the fish had that warm water that they were already dealing with. Uh, we were at a point where I f was pretty sure all the shad would be pushed back in the coves, uh, but then this little warm front, you know, must have fired up the fish, so we really had a look for them. They weren't, you know, really grouped up in any one area. Uh, but between Flick and I, you know, we, we cast a made a lot of casts, and we looked in a lot of different areas, and, uh, and boy, we caught some. That one there. hit it on the way up. <laughs> See if we got another big one in front. We got him all worked up. That just looked like the right point, didn't it, Flick? Yep, it sure did. Eh? Sun was shining on it, and it looked nice. This is a bad fish here. Everything we've been throwing is kind of uh, with shad in mind, because that's just what they're eating right now. Here we go. Nice healthy dude. And again, this isn't even a keeper here at Newton Lake. This is an awesome, awesome lake. Another one. Another, another one? Another got one? Yep, there. They're moving. All right. They're out here playing, so figured you had one out there. Maybe another one wanted to eat. There we go. Nice one. Yep, nice little fish. Healthy little fish, wanted that little fluke and just drifting there, a little bit down towards the bottom. Pretty little guy, let's get a big one. What the kind of fish that are in here chasing? Yeah, they're in there feeding, they're feeding. Yeah. Fish. Switch to a swim jig. We've actually switched uh, kind of locations on the lake. Gone across towards the cold water side, not a big one. Uh, water is probably five degrees cooler, but there's shad everywhere over here where there wasn't on the hot side. And where there's shad, there's going to be bass, so we've seen a ton of them busting up. There's shad all over here. We just got to figure out a way to catch them. We're trying to pick off some of these easier, uh, easier bank fish first. Got one? There's one. Not a big one. This cool. Little school. What do you think? Should we go that other side or keep going? I guess we know they're not going to leave. No, they're looking for food. And it's kind of. That's not so bad. Yes, she's looking for food. I think matching the hatch has got a lot to do with it. They're only about two inch shad. They're feeding on, so it's a... but they're healthy little fish. So we'll get back out there so we can get another big one. Oh, yeah, it is. It's a good fish here. Good deal, Flick. Need a net or are you going to get him? On the fluke again? Yeah, on the little, the little fluke. Nice. You just had him come up on you a little bit ago. Yeah, he came up and I think it was even the one that came up on you that first time on that Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, nice little healthy fish there. Makes a lot of difference when you're in a cove with all these shad. I do. There we go. Mom, go back in here and we'll get some more. They got to be here. They just got to turn them on. If now, we I missed, changed I had a colors. Swirl at us here. I did change colors on the fluke to a more of a, I guess you'd call it clear fluke with chrome inside of it, and maybe that did it. Yeah. Well, that was good. You know, you get into some of these coves and it, it, there's so many shed, it looks like you could walk across them like a carpet. There's just thousands and thousands. 
and you wonder why would they pick my bait instead of all these natural shad? Well, what you gotta do is again, make it a little easier for them to bite yours. What we would do is we would get the on the fringe of all these shad baits and shad balls and throw our baits and kind of make it a little slower, make it look like it was dying. And the fish are kind of keyed in to look for that easy prey. And a lot of times that was ours that they would bite. Well, we got to some shade. And I might even net this dude. It doesn't have a lot of hook in it. Come on, get in here. There we go. Everything's been about shad today. Where's my pliers? Came over the top of a little log and here this dude was. There we go, not a bad one, one of the bigger fish of the day. On an isolated piece of wood, back in a cove. Nice. Time on the Water Outdoors presents Muskie Academy, featuring host of Muskie Hunter TV, Jim Sarek, and Midwest guide, Mike Hulbert. Register at timeonthewateroutdoors.com or call 815-663-1000. Time on the Water Outdoors is your fishing and hunting boating center. We have boats from Bass Cat, Sea Ark, Skeeter. If you hunt or fish, we've got a boat that'll work for you. Time on the Water Outdoors has a full service tackle department with lines like Shimano, Terminator, Rapala, as long as a complete line of Hyla baits. If you're gonna go fishing on the Illinois River, we have a full service live bait system here. Come to Time on the Water Outdoors for outdoorsmen by outdoorsmen. Hold it right there. The Minn Kota Talon locks you onto a fishing spot with unmatched speed and stealth. And when mother nature tries to knock you off your mark, Hit back with the strongest hold on the water. Talon, stand your ground. From freshwater to saltwater, anglers depend on PowerPro to provide a fish catching edge over standard monofilament or even other super braids. The use of the exclusive enhanced body technology provides a rounder, smoother, slicker, and structurally superior ultra strong braid line, enhancing pitching and flipping, jigging, casting, trolling, and big game fishing. PowerPro provides specific benefits to every situation an angler encounters and opens the door to waters never fished before. Welcome to the inner circle. Rotating coverage up to 300 feet gives you a detailed 360 degree view of structure, contour changes, and fish so you can see them before they see you. Introducing 360 Imaging, only from Hummingbird. Time on the Water is brought to you by Hummingbird Electronics. Simply, clearly, better. Finally, the next lake we're going to highlight here is Lake Delvin, and Lake Delvin is in southern Wisconsin, not far from Lake Geneva. We've been there a bunch of times, and it's hard to not go back because it's such a phenomenal lake. Uh, it's a natural lake. It, you know, it has just about every kind of structure: weeds, grass, wood, rock, uh, a largemouth and smallmouth, along with every other game fish. They're all doing just phenomenally well. There's big fish there. It's hard not to go back to Delvin. Get them for me. They're right there on the bottom. No. Right there. Mm. Let me get this dude out. We, boy, he is double hooked. Good. Nice fish. Well, this is really a couple stories here. We started out 
filming Lake Oconomowoc near the mes uh, western Milwaukee suburbs. And there was a bad rainstorm. I mean, and it wasn't going to let up for hours. So we drove over here to Lake Delavan, which looked like it was going to be clear. And we're actually fishing a marina where we tried to film a show earlier this year, uh, but couldn't get them to go. Uh, now we're in the Lake Line Lodge Marina. Everything's mossed up, grassed up. There aren't a lot of lures you can throw. We're looking for some open areas. And I just threw the first one. And boom, there he was. Good fish, Dan. Keep him on. Oh, oh, come on, dude. Don't give up. Uh. I know, I know. They fight. There you go. Oh, look at that. Your hook came out. Nice Good. fish. Here you go. About two tap tap. Look at how fat he is. What were you doing? And just let it sit. And then I felt the two little pecks and I set the hook. And he was on. And he was. Good deal, probably around those bluegills. Looks like he's been eating. Yep. Good job, Dan. Stay on, dude. I'm getting him over here, Dan, sooner or later, I hope. Here, no, no, come on. Stay here. Hold on, hold on. I'll bring him up. There you go. Having us under a boat dock like they're supposed to be. Ooh, through the hook, too. Didn't get any little tick or anything. That fish is three pounds. Nice. Thanks, Dan. Good job. Nice job. Didn't feel a tick, just all of a sudden felt getting heavy. You know, what we found, uh, you know, after this on Delavan, we stayed shallow. Uh, and right after the bass had spawned, the bluegill spawned. And it's kind of a, a fight, you know, one against each other. When the bass are spawning, bluegills are hanging around their beds and they're picking off the fry. Right after that happens, when the bluegills are shallow spawning and vulnerable, uh, there's always bass hanging around them. You'll, you'll see a big cluster of beds and a bass just kind of cruising through the area. And we started using plastics and just kind of targeting those bluegill beds. And sure enough, there were bass at almost every one. Just a little dude, yeah. Well, his brother that jumped off was three times bigger. Just a little guy. rubber o-rings though on that bait get to use them a lot longer save yourself some dough this one's a nice chubby one and I, I shouldn't say any Ooh, one came out with it nice Dan thank you there's about three of them this size underneath that dock nice three pounder who dropping eggs as we speak. Let's see if we can go in there. I wonder if there was a bed under there because one followed it out. It could have been the male and the female. But once it dropped in there, boom. Let's see if I can get the other one. 